The Environmental Protection Agency is one of over 20 agencies involved in what became the largest effort of its kind under the Superfund program, the Lorain County Pesticide Removal Project, just outside Cleveland, Ohio. In the cities of Lorain, Elyria, and later Cleveland itself, homes and apartments were contaminated over the course of several years with the pesticide methyl parathion, a highly toxic substance licensed for outdoor use only. Contact, inhalation, or ingestion of the pesticide can cause serious illness, even death. It is especially dangerous to children who often play on the floor where any pesticide is typically applied. The problem came to light when a Lorraine City resident complained to state officials about a strong odor following the spraying of the pesticide by Lutellus Kilgore, an unlicensed applicator whose business grew by word of mouth. On-scene coordinators from US EPA Region 5 took the lead in managing the growing effort. With the local agencies and key subcontractors, they developed a four-phase action plan. The extent of contamination phase, in which local, state, and federal agencies collected a variety of samples, the results of which were used to prioritize properties for decontamination. The relocation phase, which involved contacting residents, providing information as to the risks, options, and assistance available to them, and temporarily relocating families while their homes were decontaminated. The decontamination phase had five teams working concurrently to clean and or remove items from homes which were contaminated, and the final restoration phase, in which properties were rehabilitated to repair damage caused by the relatively destructive decontamination process. After restoration, displaced families were able to return. For as far as anyone could tell, this was the first methyl parathion contamination where a large number of residences required decontamination. And because the chemical is strictly licensed for outdoor use, there was no set plan for dealing with it indoors. Methyl parathion, what is it? It's a toxic chemical, certainly. It's designed to kill things. Um, it's so toxic that if you get a relatively small amount of it in a pure form on your skin, it, it will be fatal. You can die. Uh, part of the problem, since it's meant to be used outside, it breaks down appropriately outside. Inside people's homes, there, aren't, there isn't rain, there isn't sunlight, so that chemical doesn't break down. Consequently, folks come into contact with it, getting an exposure that could cause an adverse health effect. On average, the temporary relocation of families lasted between six and eight weeks as their homes were decontaminated and restored. There were five decontamination teams working concurrently in the third phase of the effort. The process was tedious and required technicians to work in strictly maintained personal protective equipment. But before the work could begin, members of the U.S. Coast Guard's strike team videotaped and photographed each home in detail to identify property and document the condition of the home. The decon team then entered with a special decon solution designed to hydrolyze the methyl parathion. Steam cleaners were used to saturate upholstered furniture, such as couches and armchairs, while hard furniture was wiped down with the decon agent and then rinsed. Samples were then taken to confirm the effectiveness of the effort. Furniture which was decontaminated was taken from the home to temporary storage. Furniture which proved difficult to clean, and those items which were deemed unsuitable for decontamination, such as draperies, baby cribs, and toys, were collected and disposed of. Residents were then reimbursed for the cost of those items. With the furniture removed, workers applied the same decontamination agent directly onto all surfaces in the home. These were then scrubbed with a brush and rinsed with a vinegar water mix to remove paranitrophenol a byproduct of methyl parathion hydrolysis. The watery mix was then collected for off-site disposal. Sampling was done again to confirm that decontamination criteria were met. Areas in the home which could not effectively be decontaminated, including kitchen cabinets, countertops, baseboards, floor coverings, and portions of the walls, were removed and eventually replaced. Final post-decontamination samples were collected by the technical assistance team from throughout the structure. These samples were shipped to the US EPA's Environmental Response Team's laboratory in Edison, New Jersey for fast 24-hour turnaround. Given these speedy results, the decontamination of a residence typically took five days. Since the restoration team did not wear protective clothing, they could not begin their phase of the project until the lab results confirmed that the decontamination criteria were met. 
Once the okay was given, the team immediately began to rehabilitate the home. 